Uh, so we'll start now. So hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to the sixth Shura Mini program lesson. Um, I hope everyone had a great day today. Uh, and today we're going to be looking more at uh, the different blocks um, in the Sphere Edu app. Um, we're going to learn about uh, gyroscopes um, and the x-axis and y-axis um, and see how to implement, use those in a in programming the Sphere. So as I'm speaking, um, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand uh, using the Zoom function. Um, and we can answer your question for you. So does everyone have their uh, Sphero Mini with them? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you do have it. Awesome, Marion's got it. Thomas has got it. Okay, so with your Sphero, um, has anyone ever used a spinning top? So when they, it's like a toy that you spin and then it keeps spinning. If anyone has ever used that, we're going to do something similar today. Miriam used it. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to program the Sphero to do something similar like that today. So basically, um, when you have your Sphero and it's spinning like this, so we can spin it uh, clockwise or we can spin it anti-clockwise. So clockwise is this way and anti-clockwise is that way. So you can think of that as uh, how, how a clock is ticking. It ticks this way, right? All the way around. And that's the, that's spinning this way. So it's spinning the same way as the clock ticks. And the anti-clockwise is spinning the opposite way of the clock ticks. So the other way. Um, and how it spins, it spins along the y-axis. So you can think of it as uh, straight up is your y and then uh, straight horizontal is your x-axis. So basically whatever surface it's on now is your x-axis and then uh, straight vertically is your y-axis. Uh, and to help you out a bit, has anyone heard of a Cartesian plane? It's okay if you haven't. This is you'll probably learn a lot more about this in uh, when you start high school. So just to get you familiar with it, uh, this is what it looks like. So this is a Cartesian plane, and you have your x-axis. And then you have your y-axis, right? And you can think of this in real life as your x-axis is, could be your table. It could be a table, could be your hand, just anything horizontally. So right now, this is my x-axis. And then my y-axis is everything above and going down, right? So when we're spinning this sphero, it's spinning along the x axis of uh, the y axis. So spinning around here. Um, you'll learn a lot more about this uh, when you get to high school as well. So this is just to give you a little intro and to make you familiar with what it is. So this is our Cartesian plane and it's made up of a y axis and an x axis. And y axis is always vertical and x axis is always horizontal. So now that we know a bit more about that, we can use this Sphero Mini. We can program it to light up when it's spinning clockwise and uh, change color when it's spinning anti-clockwise. And we can also use the lights in the Sphero Mini, the LEDs, to measure how fast it's spinning as well. Um, and we can do that through the Sphero Edu app. So does everyone have their phones with them?
Can everyone grab their phones and then uh, connect this Firo to your phone? So just like we did in previous weeks, we open up this Sphero Edu app, just this blue one here, open that up, and then we connect our Sphero. Uh, you should tap the little uh, steering wheel icon on the bottom right, just tap that, and then it should come up with uh, connect your, your robot. And then just make sure your Bluetooth and your location are turned on. And once you've connected that, you can aim it. Um, so it's facing the right way. Um, and to aim it, again, we just tap and hold until the blue light on the Sphero is facing towards us, which is about here for me. And then you can test out that your Sphero is uh, aimed in the right direction by moving the joystick. Now, if it's moving in the right direction, then it's, uh, it's aimed well. And if it's not, you can re-aim it by tapping the button again. So once everyone's done that, we're going to create a program um, by tapping the program button, which for me is in the middle. I'm going to press create new program, big blue plus button. And then we're going to call the program, uh, we can call it spin. And then the program type should be blocks and the compatible robot should be Sphero Mini. And then press create. And then give me a thumbs up once you've created it. Thomas got it, good job. Miriam's got it. Preeti, have you got it? Awesome. So we press create. Now this is our program. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a program to light up when it's spinning clockwise and uh, light up a different color when it's spinning anti-clockwise. So when it's spinning this way, we want it to light up, uh, let's say green. And then when it's spinning the other way, it should light up red. Now to do that, we're gonna use loops, the loop block, which we learned about last week. And we're also gonna use if and else block, uh, which we also learned about last week. So the first thing we should do is we go to lights first. Lights. And then we'll set the back LED. We click and drag that block and attach it to the program. And basically what the back LED block does is it, you can click on block help check. It just sets the brightness of the block. Oh, sorry, of the sphere. Right, so basically whatever value is in this block will change the brightness of the sphere. So you can go up all the way to make it very bright or down to zero to make it not bright, we'll have no color. Um, and we, today we want the zero to be very bright. So put it all the way up to 255 and then press the blue tick. Now, once you've done that, we will add a loop. We'll add a loop so that it can check every time the sphere is spinning. 
uh, and we want to we want a, a loop that will check all the time. It won't. It will keep checking until the program stops. And we can do that by using loop forever, which we learned about last week. So this loop, this block here, will keep looping the code forever until the program is stopped. So let's click and drag that and then attach that to our back LED, just like this. And then now we need code we need uh, code inside the loop to make it light up if it's spinning. And to do that, we have to first check if the robot's spinning. And to check if it's spinning is we use an if loop, or if statement, sorry. Um, and this if block here, these two if blocks we can use. And we're going to use the if else one. So click and drag the if else. Now what you should think about is what is gonna go into the, the if block. So we're gonna, the first thing we're gonna put in there is we're gonna make the sphere light up green if it's spinning clockwise. And the other thing we're gonna put in there if it's not spinning clockwise, then it'll light up red. So we'll click and drag that into the loop forever. And then now let's change this if, if condition to check if the sphero is spinning. And to do that, I'm gonna use the sensors And we're going to go to the gyroscope here. This one here. And what the gyroscope does is it checks uh, if the, the sphero is spinning forwards or backwards. Right, so we get this. And then we can change it to either pitch, roll or your. And pitch is basically spinning this way. So uh, towards you or away from you. Roll is spinning like it's rolling. So sideways. And then your is spinning along the Y axis. So uh, similar to how you'll spin a, a top, that would be your. Um, and you can see the little images here and you can see the arrows to uh, show you how it's spinning. And so we can use any of these to change how we want it to light up. But today we're gonna to use your, so that the sphere is gonna be similar to a spinning top. So click that. And then now we need we need an operator. Sorry, we need a comparator um, to go inside of this if if block. And we'll use this one. So the reason why we're using a comparator in the if block is to compare um, the gyroscope. So compare the spinning motion and to check that if that is greater than zero. And what that means is if it's greater than zero, that means it's spinning, right? Because if the motion, if the motion is zero, then it's not spinning, it's not moving at all. But if it's greater than zero, then it's moving. So let's click and drag this gyroscope into the value zero here. Let's change this sign to greater than, greater than zero. 
So how spinning in the Sphero works is clockwise, right? Clockwise, which is the way a clock ticks, it's spinning the same way. That way is positive, and then anti-clockwise is negative. So if it's greater than zero, then it'll be positive, which means uh, what we put in the if block here will show when the uh, the sphero is spinning clockwise. So now we've got that condition. Let's set the if block to change color when it's spinning. We can do that using the main LED. So click and drag that one there. And then we can change the color of it to any one we want. Or if you want to, you can go into the operators and then use a, use this one. So the color transition one. And what this color transition block does is if you click and hold it, and you press block help. It will change the color of the block based on this value. Right, so we can change the color of the LED to blue, red, green, um, if it is spinning. So we'll click and drag that one there. And now at the moment, this just says change the LED to blue, from blue to red, right? So we need to change the main LED, which is the, the main lights of the zero. And we find that one um, in the sensors. Main LED, so this is the main lights. So change the color from the main lights to red, to green. So what this is saying is when the sphere is spinning clockwise, it will change the color of the LEDs to green. And what this channel of is, value here this is basically saying um, how often the color will keep appearing. Right, and we wanna change this to be the same as the uh, gyroscope here. So like we did in the if statement, we'll click and drag this one, we'll do your, And then we need a, a operator here as well. So click drag the operator, this one, put it where the value is, and then put the your here, which is the Y axis. Make sure it fits this. And then we're gonna do divided by And then 7.84. And the reason for seven, we're using that particular value is because that's how many times the sphere will change colors every second when it's rotating. So has everyone got that? Does give me a thumbs up if everyone's got that? Does that make sense? Awesome, Preeti's got it. Miriam's got it. Thomas, how are you going? Do you need any help?
Okay. So just uh, use the raise hand function if you need any help. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is now that we've got the sphere to change colors when it's spinning clockwise, we need to add the else block to change the color when it's spinning anti-clockwise. So we're going to do the exact same thing as we did in the if block, except we're going to change it to red, right? So just, I think we can copy this. Okay, so if we copy and paste it um, by tapping and hold, tap and hold the main LED, you can press copy from canvas, this one here. Or you can use duplicate, that's probably easier. So you can tap and hold and then press duplicate and then just add it to the else. And then now we want to change it to light up red. So now what this does, it, when it's spinning clockwise, it, it lights green. The sphere will light green. And then in the else, it says uh, when this sphere is not spinning clockwise, which means it's spinning anti clockwise, it will light up red. So that's our program done. You can press start and then start spinning your sphere. And when you spin it, you'll see that it turns green. And then when you spin it the other way, it turns red. Sometimes when you spin it the other way, uh, it, it will stay blue, it will stay green or blue. So you will need to add an absolute value. And that's this one. So click and drag this that says square root of zero in the operators. I want to click and drag this into here. Right, so this one again in operators. And then we're going to tap square root. And then we're going to click absolute value. And the reason we're doing this is because when it's spinning anti-clockwise, it's negative. And we need to use absolute value to take off the negative sign. So use absolute value and then put the y-axis back in here. So it should look something like this. And then you can test it out, pressing start. And then you can test, try rolling your sphere, try spinning it clockwise and anti-clockwise, and then see what happens.
Has everyone got this? Does anyone need any help? This is a pretty complicated uh, code here. There's a lot of blocks to it. So if you need any help, just uh, raise your hand and then uh, we can help you. So has everyone got that working? When you press start and then spin your Sphero, does it keep changing color? Does anyone want to show, show the class? Their Sphero is spinning. Marion? When I spin it, it, when I spin it this way, I'll show you this. It, it goes red. Nice. And then it goes green. Yeah, good job. That's exactly how it should work. <laughs> Great work. Thank you. So did everyone else get that? Thomas, Preeti? Is that working for you? Preeti's got it. Good job. Okay, so again, the program looks like this. Um, and if you need any help with it, just raise your hand or uh, message the chat. So now that we've got that working, let's add a few things to this. So I want everyone to add some sounds. You can add it when it, the program starts or when it's spinning or when it's, uh, when it's spinning clockwise or it's spinning anti-clockwise. I want everyone to add a few sounds into this program and then you can show it off to the class. And again, sounds are in the sounds tab. And you can either use the random sound or you can use the speak where you can type in text and then it'll speak. And then random sound, you can select from a whole list of sounds. So you can go through those and then see which one you like the best.
How's everyone going with that? So again, we're just going to add some cool sounds to the program when the program starts, when it's spinning clockwise, and then when it's spinning anti-clockwise. So I want everyone to add three sound blocks, start, spinning clockwise, and anti-clockwise. Ryan, got a question? Um, when I um, when I start uh, when, just when I start the program when I start flipping it, it just goes orange and then yellow and then it starts doing red. Right, um, that's because um, in the code here, it's changing every second. It's changing to uh to green or red. So no, but, um, it, but but it does yellow, not green or red. Yeah, so it will when it's going from green to red, it'll go to yellow first. Right? So if I um one second. So if I look, have a look at like a color wheel. If you've ever seen one before. So a color wheel, right? So your sphero is going from green and has to go, it'll turn every second. It will turn uh, yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange, orange, red, orange to red. Right. And then when you spin it the other way, it'll go backwards. So it'll go red, orange, orange, yellow, orange, red, yellow, yellow, green to green. And we just keep going like this. Um, and that's because we used the transition block. So we used uh, this one here, this block here. Oh, cool. Wow. Okay. Thanks. That's right. So Preeti, your color's not working. Um, what's happening with your color? Is it not showing or is it the wrong color? It is not coming up. So it's not showing any colors when you're spinning it. Is that correct? Yep. So if that's the case, um, just make sure that your if block is correct. Your if block is correct. So it looks like this. Um, and then also make sure that it will change to green or red. So Preeti, does your, your program look like this?
if your program looks like this, it should work. Um, just let me know if it's not working and I can have a look at your program. But has anyone managed to add three sounds to this program? So one sound when it starts, another sound when it's spinning clockwise, and then another sound when it's spinning anti-clockwise. So to get this working, uh, we're going to, oh, Miriam, do you have a question? No, okay. So uh, to add the three sounds, we're just gonna go to our program. We're gonna go to sounds and then we'll play a random sound. So we'll click and drag this block. And so we want to play three sounds, right? And we want to play a sound when the program starts. So to do that, the program, when it starts, it's, we could place it here. So this on start program block, that's, uh, that occurs, that happens. Uh, everything under it happens when the program starts in order. And so if we put it, um, under, straight underneath the start program block, the sound will happen first. And we can play a random sound or you can select one that you like. And then for the second sound, we wanted to play a sound that happens when the uh, sphere is spinning clockwise, right? So to do that, uh, if you remember that our if, is checking our if block here, is checking if it's spinning clockwise. So if we put it in here, now it will play sound when it's spinning clockwise. And then we wanted our last one, we wanted it to play a sound when it's spinning anti-clockwise. Um, and we can do that in the else statement, in the else block there. So now we've got our three sounds. And it will play sounds every time it's spinning clockwise or anti-clockwise. Uh, you can press start and test that out. It'll also probably be good if you um, instead of playing a random sound, you actually select the sound. So that you know uh, which sound is playing when it's spinning clockwise or anti-clockwise. So we'll do that. And then when it's staying still, we can play this one. So now if I start it, like crash, spin it. 
I'll play bubble. And then when I spin it the other way, I'll play this out. Does everyone got that working? Give me a thumbs up if you got that working. Awesome, Preeti's got it. Miriam, have you got it? Thomas, you got it? Awesome. So once you've got that, our next task, our next activity would be, um, I want to add uh, uh, some blocks to make the sphere light up a different color when it's staying still. So when it's staying still, I want it to light up a different color. And if you remember to, I think it was last week, uh, we did this. We made this for light up and play a sound when it wasn't moving. So if you want to, you can go to the program from last week or two weeks ago and then have a look at that um, just by going out and then checking the programs here. But if you'd like a little hint, we can use another if, which is here. We can use another if, uh, if block to check if it's staying still. So see how you go with that?
So to get this working, uh, we use the if block, and we're gonna we want this if block to check if the sphere is staying still. So we can add this if block to the end of this one inside the loop. And then now we have to change the condition in the if block to check if it's staying still. Um, and to do that, we'll use a comparator. So we use this one here, this comparator, um, which checks one value against another value. And then we wanna check the speed of the sphere, right? Because if it's if the speed is is very slow or it's there's no speed at all, that means the sphere is not moving. So the speed is the accelerometer, which is this one. And we click and drag that into the value there. And then now, if the speed of the sphere is less than three. So this is saying if the, the speed of the sphere is moving very slowly or not moving at all, then do something. And what should we do? We should light up the sphere, play a sound, pretty much anything you want when you want the sphere to do when it's not moving. Um, but in this case, we will we will light up. We'll use this one, fade from. And what fade from does, if you want to know what a block does, you can uh, tap and hold and press block help. So what fade the fade block does, it changes from one color to another color over a certain amount of time. So let's change from pink to blue. And we can say over five seconds. So now if you press start, So if you press start and then you spin your sphere a little bit and then make it stop, it will change from pink to blue. And I'll keep doing that over and over when it's staying still. And you can spin it to change it to green and you can spin it the other way to change it to red. And your program should look something like this. Um, and we can add as many blocks as we want. We can add another if, if we wanted to. And we can use that if to check if it's uh, rolling. Um, we can check if it's being thrown up. Um, there's a lot of things that we can do here as well. Um, so you can have a play around with this program um, and add on different, uh, different sounds, different colors if you wanted to. And then, yeah, I think that's all that we have time for today. Um, does anyone have any questions? Just put your hand up if you have any questions. Thanks, Preeti. Um, if there's no questions, uh, I think we can wrap it up now. Um, so I'll just unmute everybody so we can all say goodbye.
All right, thank you, Raymond. I'm going to unmute everyone. Say goodbye, Raymond. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. See you next week, okay? Who heard I finish? Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, everyone.